Children create art everywhere. At every country you go to, you almost would look at that and say, clearly this is one of the most central ways I have of understanding the communication from children. If we were to talk about children's leadership, children's protection, change driven from and with children, we start from their place of knowledge, communication, visualizing the world and understanding, and we work from there, not from the places that we demand they start from. Join us for a fourth critical conversation in the Reconstructing Children's Rights Institute. Our stories, our faces, our voices. Who tells our story? Organized by the Care and Protection of Children, or CPC Learning Network. In this conversation, we learn from four artists, storytellers, and activists. Aisha Bain, Meredith Hutchinson, Miriam Sagrinas, and Galu Indri Wirati. This session will move the conversation beyond words and concepts to focus on the power of the visual arts and storytelling to portray the lives of children and families. The speakers reflect on how the visual arts can be used to further perpetuate embedded colonial racist and patriarchal norms within the humanitarian aid industry and within the international children's rights sector. The spectrum of visibility for so many Black and brown communities and so many marginalized communities is incredibly narrow. There's a handful of archetypes um, that people's stories are forced into. There's no provided space to share multiple identities, to share complexity, for people to craft own author, how they are represented. Visual arts in general in the humanitarian field has a process that is incredibly exploitative. The aid industry has been using the same communication strategy as the market, like advertising companies. Companies want to sell a product to grow their business and charities want to raise money to grow their organization, which, okay, it's related thing. But they're using the same tactics. So therefore, they are the same people, the same system, the same culture, who has the voice, the power to tell the story and who decide who is going to be the main character of these stories. The story has been told from the oppressor's eyes. In this conversation, we are tackling the question, how can art decolonize and reconstruct child protection and children's rights? Visual art can dismantle racism and colonialism. More of the framing of an artist as a facilitator, especially when you're when you're working with communities. So how can you build out and hold space for other people to share their stories. There is real power in integrating visual communications, visual art into programming for children that becomes so many things. It can become a protective factor, a healing factor, an imaginative, explorative, educational factor, a communications factor, an advocacy factor, a connection factor to themselves and to other children. So when you think about it from those elements, it becomes, how would we not integrate this into everything that we're doing with children? We are also looking at art and hearing from the artists themselves, including the Institute's illustrator. Illustration have a lot of potential, especially now. You can use it uh, to stand up for your values. You can use it to retell histories. Also, you can use it to debunk myths, explain facts. I really like the idea about before we have the discussion, before I create this illustration, that you want me to give the power to the children, not to the adults. And it's really intriguing to create the artwork, the process. It has its own freedom, like people can reflect on it and they can think about it afterwards. They can have their own opinion after they look at the illustration. And that's what I really want to communicate. And we reimagine a way forward. Art has been always been here, reinvented and invented and present like from a thousand years ago since, since we exist. So we don't need to recreate anything new to give a voice to who we believe that we should have the voice. It's, the voice is there already, you know? I think we need to reframe what is knowledge 
and by whom this is defined. Whose visions and framings should drive the reimagining of the future of the aid, of aid in international children's rights field. It's not about the aid industry allowing children, uh, especially black and brown children, to input into a vision. It is about centering the visions of black and brown children in a reimagining of the industry and the field. There is a deep, fundamental, and global responsibility of these institutions to stop causing harm and to reimagine and redesign and implement change with those who are most affected at the center of that redesign. Visit the Reconstructing Children's Rights Institute website to join an entire series seeking to dismantle unjust systems.